Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be carving a little dachshund. I haven't posted in a while, so I've, I've got a few things to get you all caught up on. I did splurge and got a couple of healthy knives. These knives. People gush about them all the time and, and say how great they are. Well, they have a reason to gush about them. They are really nice. The blade, they, they come super sharp, highly polished. Um, now, the way I got these is, is most people that try to get a healthy knife will know they're... Um, not as easy to get as an OCC knife or some of the other knives out there. Uh, you send them an email and, and confirm what you want through the email. They'll contact you back. And it could be three months. It could be six months, depending on you know, how backed up they are. But if you're patient... And wait, I think I did um, a little more than three months for for mine. Um, you might as well get two or, or or more. I think there's a two knife minimum. Um, I'm guessing. I I'm, I remember seeing that somewhere, but uh, you might as well get get two if you're going to wait for it. But uh, I tell you what, they are nice. Now, to the dachshund. Um, I'm going to... I, I, I shrunk this down, as you can see. I, my bandsaw doesn't cut that high. The 14-inch bandsaw um, I gave to my son-in-law. Um, and so I'm going to cut these out with my current saws that I have. And... That's about as, as high, you know, I can go a little higher than that, but that's getting pretty close to where I need to be as far as height goes. So you can see I drew these lines on the pattern. And the reason why I do that is because you want to get one at the top and you put on your side. You want to line those lines up exactly. Otherwise, when you cut your top pattern out and and uh, then your side pattern, they won't match. It'll it'll be the sh the form will be deformed. Um, so to to get it right, to get this shape right on both planes. You need to get these lines, create these lines in some strategic points. I use the nose uh, right by the ear I, or the toenail and the toenail. You can see the toenail on the top pattern and on the side pattern. And that's why I went with the toenail and then the nose. Now I'll use um, just a glue stick, glue this down, and take it to the saw. Now I'm using a Tupelo. Now Tupelo is not all that great for a knife, but it's great for a rotary tool. So my friends over at Carving Fusion, Jordy and and Ben Studio on the Lake and uh, Rob and uh, Evil Rick, all these guys that like to use the rotary tools, Tupelo, you got to give it a try. It's a great. It's it's much lighter than basswood. It's a grown in the south it's a kind of like a 
um, swamp wood, like kind of like a, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the tree, like a cypress, I guess. Um, but Tupelo, some bird carvers use it because it is light, and if they're going to do an elaborate, um, they're going to do an elaborate uh, branch coming way out, and put the bird way out there, it has to be super light. Uh, and Tupelo is light. And uh, when using a rotary tool, carves like butter. Here's something I wanted to show you. Right here. I made that. Those are Harbor Freight um, storage containers. And uh, I just took some scrap plywood that I had laying around and built this. Um, so they, they slide out for consumables, nuts, bolts, and stuff like that. And I got a new toy. I got a 12-inch miter saw. A DeWalt miter saw. So, pretty happy about that. So here I'm showing the glue up process. Kick it into two times speed just so I don't bore you to death. And it may seem silly to show you the glue up process, but I've had a couple of uh, people DM me and, and say exactly how do you do it. Um, and so this is how I do it. Um, as you can see, I do really do take my time with this and make sure I get those lines lined up and think through the process. Um, if I can use the flat part of the base of the wood for the bottom of the feet, that's ideal. Um, and that way I'm not trying to level that out later. Um, you can use spray adhesive, you can use just about any type of glue, but I just found the, the glue stick is the easiest, the cleanest, the quickest way to handle it and uh, hey we, we have enough other problems to deal with to make this this easy and uh, it is easy make sure those lines are lined up all right so I just got back from the bandsaw and as you can see I have my side blank cut out. Now these little voids are no big deal as long as we have the majority flat so it will ride like so. We can cut, the, cut out the top pattern. And this stuff is a dream to cut out on the bandsaw. It cuts so easy. I have a very, very thin blade, the smallest. I think it's one eighth inch on my Delta 10 inch bandsaw. And uh, it has one of those, uh, I bought it at a wood show uh, from Alex Snodgrass. Um, it, you can get just as fine as a jigsaw uh, and I don't mean the handheld jigsaw, I mean the scroll saw uh, is what I mean. The, uh, as fine as a scroll saw in these, in these turns and cutouts. Um, so our next step is <clears throat> we're going to tape it together and we're going to be using pack, packing tape. And the reason why we're going to use packing tape in particular is this is petroleum product and this will lubricate the blade it won't make it sticky it actually aid in the cutting so we're going to tape together as well as we can this whole thing so it, it stays together now I, I have had um, these things come apart while um, 
while you're cutting on the saw and use good judgment. Use good common sense. Um, when doing it, I'm not going to have to get all that detailed in cutting out this profile. Um, and I may leave it a little stockier in this area. Now, both me and my wife had dachshunds when we were children growing up. Her dachshund was named Horatio. And my dachshund was named uh, Domek, Golden Falcon the <clears throat> Second. Now, Domak was a show dog, but he had a rash on his nose that would disqualify him from being a show dog. It was he was born and bred and had papers to be a show dog. And because he had uh his fur didn't come all the way down to his nose like it should. Uh, they let him go for like a hundred bucks. They were like, yeah, somebody come and give this dog a home. And so we did, and he was a great dog. But he was a big dachshund. He was big, stocky. I mean, like 50-pound Dachshund. He was big. Uh, big enough to pull us. <laughs> As kids, he would pull us. So, uh, and he was very strong. Horatio, on the other hand, was a normal sized dachshund, more like this. So, I'm going to do like an in between. Um, maybe not this thin, but not as big as uh, Mac. So I think I got them all taped together here. Now as you do cut, pieces will fall away. And as long as you can maintain a flat, square surface, you're okay. You won't have to stop and tape it together. Use your judgment. Sometimes I do stop and tape it together. Sometimes just letting the pieces fall off as I go, it works because there's enough surface to keep it my my flat reference here all right I'm back from the bandsaw um, I was able to cut it on the this on the 10 inch um, Delta using the stabilizer that's the piece that I was referring to earlier it's called the stabilizer it gives you like jigsaw type cuts super detailed so let's pull the blank out so that's vertical and here's our horizontal so you can see <laughs> with those saw cuts in there it almost looks like a long hair doesn't it So you can see that the uh, the grain, let's see, our grain is going lengthwise like this. So these legs are going to be very fragile. Now there's a couple of tricks we can do to help stabilize those by adding, uh, after we get the center cut and a little more defined, we can add uh, cyanoacrylate glue to this to stiffen it up so it's less likely to break. On to doing a little carving. All right, so uh, we got our knives all lined up here, and I got a little piece of scrap wood, a little pla uh, practice piece of wood here. And I'm trying all of my higher, uh, 
polished, sharp knives on this. And uh, and so far the Helbys have, have done the best. That's a OCC detailer and the edge rolls on that one for some reason. Uh, it did do so well, but the other OCC did great and uh, the flex cut did really good. You can see how soft this wood is. That's just my thumbnail. Look, look at what it does to that wood. It's not as soft as balsa wood, but it's pretty darn soft. And so I tried just hogging out some wood. I don't usually, that's not my style. I don't take out big chunks of wood when I carve. I, I go a little, little bit at a time. And that is like butter. So if you're going to carve this type of wood with a knife, you better have a very sharp, highly polished knife. All right, let's do the center line as always. All my carvings always get a center line. It is a good reference to do a center line and, and then round to that center line. So just finishing up with the center line there and starting in immediately dug into that grain. You can see that had to reverse and I tell you, you have to take it easy because it cuts so easy. Uh, you could just chop that whole head off probably with a swipe of a knife. It's so um, light. <clears throat> Not really any grain to it. Um, and it just feels like it's full of air. It's, it's so light to hold in your hand. And uh, very easy to carve with this very sharp, very polished knife. All right, let's speed it up a little bit. And we'll do two times the speed. You can see we're just taking the corners off right now. The whole goal here is rounding to that center line. Taking in account those ears because they protrude forward. And being very, very careful with those legs. Especially the front legs. There, there's not a whole lot of meat there, so being very careful with those. All right, so here's the progress so far. So we're moving these little slivers of wood because honestly, I got so close to that line in using the saw that I use, using the blade and the stabilizer. There's not a whole lot of wood that needs to be removed. It just needs to be rounded. So once this is rounded over, uh, we'll do a little bit of sanding, get those legs divided and move forward. All right, I have a Fordham tool here, but that would probably just turn it into the whole thing into dust immediately. Too powerful, too strong, too much. Let's take it a, uh, one size down. By the way, if you, if you do have a Dremel tool, this little keyless chuck replaces 
all the collets. And it is so fast and easy to use. Anybody with a Dremel, you got to get that keyless chuck. It's only about 10 bucks. It'll save you a ton of time, especially if you change bits often. And here's another quick tip. This is the best strop that I have ever had. Got it on Amazon. Comes preloaded. When it gets really clogged up, just a drop of olive oil on your finger and you rub it around and it rejuvenates itself. A great strop. Best one I've had. And I've had a lot of them. So watch this cuts all blade now you have to be careful you have to be careful on the back because the tail comes right down the center so you just can't cut all the way through on the back feet. The back feet will be partially through. Leaf so the tail, you don't cut it. Then you'll have to come into either side of where the tail is. Oh boy, my battery's running low. To the corded version. I've had this guy for a long time. Let's slow her down a little bit. So here I took 120 grit sandpaper, wrapped it around a small dowel, and going in and removing all the sharp edges makes a huge difference. 120 sandpaper on this wood, very light grained wood, makes a huge difference. Worked out perfect. Okay, as usual, Patterns are so important. Um, I'm looking at the ears and I see that I need to uh, pull that ear back. I did make it purposely large. And as, as it goes, I refine. And I'll bring in that cut onto the arm. And then to create this space here on the back leg a little removal of that wood and keep chugging along this is the book I used realistic dogs it has lots of great pictures it's a great book for a reference highly recommend it all right so just little details now Starting to get that cute factor with those ears back a little further. Now you can see more of the head. So it's coming along. 
All right, so you can see I took off a little bit too much wood and I've added a little bit of this plastic wood and the profile definitely looks better now. Much better. Looks just like a dachshund now. And you can see here's some, some of the dried, that's, that's already dried putty. Same color as the wood, but I'm gonna paint them anyways. Uh, tip when you're using this, it is water-based, so when you put it on, you can just dip your finger in water and smooth it out and save yourself a whole lot of sanding. It does sand super easy, but it's very dusty. All right, so I believe I'm done on the carving process. Uh, you know, you have to ask yourself along the line, uh, where to stop, what's enough? And this is a, a relatively small little thing that's gonna sit on the shelf. Um, you know, it's it's most likely not gonna be picked up and, and, you know, looked at really, really closely. It's gonna be sitting on the shelf as a reminder of our childhood uh, dog. And so I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. Now this being such a soft wood, it does need to be sealed uh, and painted. And I'm gonna use uh, gesso to seal it and then paint it. And there we are, a quick paint job of um, gesso and a little burnt sienna. And by the way, the I used some ruby balls and a ruby ruby tip in this little guy. And uh, beautiful with the two blow. Works beautiful. Don't even have to sand it when you're done. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.